Thank you, Duwali. His Excellency, my friends and colleagues on the podium, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for inviting me. My voice is not what it's supposed to be. It's been, the, the past three days has just been hectic. But I want to say thank you very much. I feel very honored and humbled to be invited with such great people. All I can say is that I'm so happy that Africa is converging here at Soccer City, as South Africa is the Soccer City. And uh, I'm sure you'll write good about that. Um, what is important is that Africa has opened for all Africans. Africa is for all those who live in it. On Saturday, I was telling Luali, as I was driving to a place called Tawu, on the radio, there was a gentleman who was being interviewed about this whole conference, and I was very, very happy. I don't know if Mr. Matata Tsedu is in the house. Oh, okay. His name was mentioned, and I was quite happy to hear that we're hearing more about Africans and writers and journalists coming together. And as I said, I think it's important that we be free to tap all the other news and go to different countries and write. And I think what's important is that education is something that is very important. I love my music very much. Music is my first love, but I wanted to be an educated musician because fame comes and goes. And if you have your education, no one will ever take it away from you. And my mother wanted me to be a lawyer, and I tried to study law, but all I was looking for was the bottom line, the money that I was making when I was starting to sing. But she insisted that she doesn't want me to be like her, she didn't want me to be a domestic worker like her, and she didn't want, want me to be at anyone's mercy, and she insisted that I go and get some kind of education. And I want to thank her for that today, because I can start here in front of you and speak, you know, openly about the importance of education. And I did try to study law. I failed Afrikaans three times. I failed mercantile law. I failed history one, and I passed English. And I said, Mom, I did try. It's not for me. <laughs> but I didn't despair. I went to Trinity College of London to study speech and drama in public speaking. And um, I was very happy, even though it was very difficult writing those assignments, reading all those books and those poems like Kubla Khan and everyone. And it was just mind-boggling. I think he's a professor, he knows how difficult that poem is. But I made sure that I, 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 I submit my assignments and pass, because I knew that if my fame goes, I'll have something to fall back on. And I went to UNISA to study adult education, but I was very scared. I thought, I'm not going to do a degree, I'll do a certificate. But Professor Veronica Mackay said, you have to do a degree, Yvonne. And I continued to do uh, my higher diploma, and they credited me because when I did my certificate, it didn't take me a year, it took me 18 months, now you can imagine. But you know what, I never despair. And I went and I did my higher diploma, and I was credited, and I had to study my B.Ed., and I left it, you know, because I thought money is running away now. I think I have acquired a lot of education, but I know that you're never too old to study. It is important to study. And I went and I did my business management. So you can always ask yourself, why is she always doing these things? This is what makes me a better musician than other of my peers. And I like doing that. And I never say I know it all. I always want to acquire more knowledge. I always want to be with people who will nurture me and make me a better person. And that is what uh, I always do, to make myself a better person. And when UNICEF and the UN asked me to be their goodwill ambassador, I was quite humbled because they could have chosen any other person. But I did oblige and I said, I am keen to do this. And in the past six years, being a Goodwill Ambassador for UNICEF, I've seen faces and places, and I've seen journalists writing about the good that we see. And I'm happy today that our president, our ex-president is here. Once you become a president, you always are a president, that you are here. And oh, I didn't acknowledge the Vice-Chancellor. Sorry, sir. 
sorry. You know, he's sitting right here. Uh, the Deputy Vice Chancellor. And I want to say, I'm glad that you are here. You it is important for journalists to write and they should not be stopped or being deterred from writing. I think freedom of speech should be very important and it should be welcomed in this Africa of ours. Our journalists become, their hands become tied because they don't know what to write and what not to write. I think it is important that we report what we see, what we, we know, Africa is not a duck continent, as it is said. This is the continent of love. This is the continent that has got absolutely everything, and it has to be reported as such. But I dare say education is something that is important. I know most of the newspapers, they would write everything, and you find a small column of education right at the back when you're actually tired of reading everything. Now we need to give education the space that it deserves and we need to encourage those young journalists out there to explore and we need to nurture them and to say you need to write positively. We do know that other type, there are other type blogs out there who will write anything. We know there's journalists who do investigation, there's journalists who write about soccer, there's journalists who write about education. I think it is important that we expose our children in reading, in wanting to know more about education. Education and health for me go hand in hand because if you expose, if you write about health as well, if you know that young women who are or just ordinary women who walk 40 kilometers to go and find uh, some kind of help and some of them die on the way or some of them die giving birth, some of them it's because they are illiterate, some of them it's because they're not educated. Women who are abused, who stay in marriages when they are abused because they're not educated, because they are illiterate, we need to empower those women to say they should know that they can do things for themselves. We need to say to those women, you can buy a net. You can get a net maybe for free if there is money from donors. And women are so vulnerable and disenfranchised. Now we need you. We need your help, ladies and gentlemen. And as I said, I will always be here. This is the time for us to start walking the talk. This continent is where my heart is and this is where my heart belongs and I'm so grateful that there are people like you. I will always be at your service. I always say a learning nation is a better nation. Thank you very much. I, okay, I see some few people there making gestures. I work hard for my money. I work hard for my money. If you want me to sing, you must pay.